thank you so today um, the topic is um, to learn from our trading mistake that's what the topic is so when we are making mistakes in trading then we need to be aware of that we are making mistakes and then how we are behaving when we make those mistakes and the mistakes we do whether the trade is a winner trade or trade is a loser trade we need to evaluate both trades so whether the outcome is is a positive or the outcome is negative so that's what the topic is so we unconsciously behave in a different way as a human being so these are some of the things i read somewhere self-deception how we uh, people when they have a road accident this is what they say uh, some of the example i collided with a stationary truck coming the other way a pedestrian hit me and went under my car the guy was all over the road i had to serve a number of time before i hit him Another one, an invisible car came out of nowhere, it struck my car and vanished. The pedestrian had no idea which direction to run, so I ran over him. The telephone pole was approaching. I was attempting to serve out of its way when it struck my car. So you see how people are deceiving. So we deceive like this, same way we deceive ourselves when we are training. So I'll try to explain to you. So we deceive ourselves just like these guys who are involved in the accident so when we make a mistake it's like an accident and we fool ourselves so we don't need to fool ourselves because if we fool ourselves we are uh, we are not improving here's a uh, the movie the matrix morpheus telling neo so taking the blue pill and red pill i'm sure you have read it somewhere somewhere many times or watched the movie the matrix so morpheus telling the neo uh how deep the rabbit hole goes if you take the red pill so he's asking neo to take the red pill instead of the blue pill so <clears throat> now trading is a game so trading is a game just like any other game there are millions of games out there uh, these games are designed uh, most of the games are designed by uh, for a reason so Trading is a is a trading is a game designed by big boys uh, for a reason. So the barrier for entry is nothing there. You can open an account with a five hundred dollars, fifty dollars. I mean, there are brokers with a minimum amount required to trade fifty dollars, and uh, or minimum amount uh, we offer our trading services. Uh, for $200 for lifetime. So you give me $200 for the lifetime, I will make you a lot of money. And how much I need to, if you ask them how much money I need to trade with you, uh, only 200. So you give me 200, you put 200 in the account and I'll make you a millionaire. So, so trading is a game designed by big boys because if if we if if a retail trader don't go put the money and trade how the big boys will make money so the barrier to entry is nothing you don't need anything to trade you just download an app maybe Robinhood put some money and start trading so this is the way we uh, trade uh, so this is a common a loop so I'm presenting you a loop betting on a future so this is the way we are betting on our future we have certain beliefs. So previously I uh, uh, talked about the beliefs. I will again uh, have a, another presentation on the beliefs in detail, show you some process flow, some charts, et cetera, on the beliefs. So let's say traders have a belief. We all have belief. We have identity belief. We have a spiritual, spiritual belief. We have a trading belief, who we are, uh, et cetera. So we have certain belief maybe your belief is uh you can make a lot of money trading uh without any work on your own people have the belief they, they don't need to uh, do any homework they just open an account and they start making money so that could be a belief it could it's it's a useful belief or it's a non-useful belief whatever it is only you know so you can work on your belief so there are thousands and thousands of belief related to just trading so we have certain beliefs. 
So let's say we have a belief that uh, trading, we can make a lot of money and then we go and bet. So we bet. So first of all, traders don't, um, most of the traders, they don't even know there is something called bet. They just put the money on on uh, on trade. So just put all the money in one trade, Tesla, Tesla is moving and puts all the money in the Tesla and keep making money, money, and then the Tesla certain, uh, suddenly reverses and then wipe you out. So we have certain belief and then we need to put some bet. So there is an art to betting. So you need to bet. Just like in casino, you go the the in casino, when you go to the casino, the, the odds are not stacked in your favor. Whereas, uh, so that's gambling. So there's a difference between gambling and uh, risk. In trading, you take a risk, but risk you take, uh, you, you evaluate your risk and then you take the risk. So there's a risk and there's a reward. So we have certain beliefs and then we bet. So there's an art or science or mathematics on what to bet and how to bet and what amount to bet. And then we get certain uh, set of outcomes. So there's the outcome there. So belief, bet and set of outcomes. So belief, bet and outcomes. So these outcomes are determining our future. So it could be future A, it could be future B, C, D, et cetera. So we have certain beliefs Thousands of beliefs, useful belief, non-useful belief, trash belief, beliefs not serving any purpose or some useful beliefs. Uh, like you have a belief right now. So um, on a holiday, you're here to learn something. So you have such a positive belief that if you attend uh, this session, you may learn a few things. I have a belief that if I teach, no, I learn and I give some value to my members. So we are all operating right now on a certain belief. So belief, bet, and then future A, B, C, D. So depending on uh, so many bets, we, we have taken the bets in the past, we are taking the bets in the future, and we will take the bets in the, uh, uh, we are taking the bets right now, we will take certain bets in the future. So our life is a result of all the bets we are taking. So, here are some examples of a series of bad bets. Sometimes we take uh, bad bets uh, one after the other. So this is a series. It's staying up late. You know, it's uh, tomorrow is a work day, but staying up late, having heavy dinner, no, knowingly that a heavy dinner may cause problem in sleep. Drinking alcohol, oh, it's okay, it's party time. Waking up late, sleeping through alarm, going to work late, maybe getting involved in the road race, and then when you arrive in the office, argue with all the colleagues and uh, get in trouble with the boss, and then uh, this uh, this uh, loop repeats. So this is one example of series of bad bets. You took all the bad, uh, these are all bad bets. It starts with staying up late and having uh, dinner, et cetera, uh, late, heavy dinner and drinking alcohol, waking up late, sleeping through alarm, going to work late, getting involved in road rage, arguing with the boss, not completing the assignment, et cetera. So all these are examples of bad bets. So if we keep taking the bet like that, uh, you know, the future is not good. I came to know one person, it just came to my mind. So there's one person who works in a restaurant as a waiter. So he works in a restaurant, work as a waiter. He has a Tesla. He got into uh, some um, traffic uh, ticket. So he got the traffic ticket. He got the traffic ticket. So his boss said, hey, you got the traffic ticket. Uh, let's see the number. So he uh, read some numbers on the traffic citation and his boss says, okay, you go and play uh, some lotto with these numbers. So this guy went and played the lotto and he won $10,000 with that lotto. So this works out, right? So then he took this $10,000 and he went to the casino. There's a casino here close to my home. And he went and put the $10,000 on some bet and then he lost it. So you know, that's his process of evaluating, getting the ticket, then getting the number from the ticket, um, buying a lotto, winning $10,000, and then putting that $10,000 in a 
casino and then losing it all and then uh, next day it's the same thing waiting for the check so outcomes or feedback so this is what i read by elders huxley experience is not what happens to a man it is what a man does with what happens to him so this person i don't know if he learned anything because i see him he's the same he goes and gets his check and put it in the casino and then uh, monday by monday he's broke so we need to learn from the experience so outcome so each trading uh, each trading um, uh, when we close the trade we need to evaluate the trade whether it's a winner or a loser in both cases we need to evaluate the trade what things we did right what things we did wrong whether we made mistake or whether we did not make mistakes whether we got lucky in this trade we survived or was it based on our some skill so we need to do this this evaluation for each trade so not many of us go through this process there is something called debriefing at the end of the trading day when you finish your trading day it takes 10 minutes and you evaluate all the outcomes what happened during the day make a journal debriefing write down all the things you saw try to visualize and, and and store the image of all the charts and all the signals uh, you saw or the decision you made to enter and exit and manage and scaling in and scale out and if any mistakes you made you record it so this is a, in the debriefing process if you go through uh, each outcome every day of all the trades then over the time uh, you master it you become expert you acquire the experience and the expert just not the experience expertise comes when you are uh, doing something with your experience not just uh, uh, passing you know the day is over and that's it so experience versus expert so outcome as a learning experience so each outcome of the trade is uh, as a learning experience and becoming an expert. So are you getting experience of becoming an expert? You need to get some experience and becoming an expert as the time goes by with each trade. So each trade. So uh, traders, what they do, they, instead of spreading the bet on various trades, if, if, you, uh, if the more you trade, the more you trade, the, more, the smaller bet you take, the more learning experience you get whether it's a real trade or whether it's a simulation. So imagine if uh, compared to the uh, compare person who takes only one trade a day, who practice only one trade, whether it's simulation or, or if he's taking four or five trades and in, in a simulation account. So, um, and, 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 and doing the homework for all those trades. So our incorrect, so this is the learning loop. So this is an incorrect learning loop. This is what we, most of the traders do uh, during the day they have certain beliefs they bet on based on those beliefs so they see something on the chart this is their belief that this is rocketing upward i need to go all in so they bet and then the outcome comes so the outcome if it's uh then the outcome they feel the outcome incorrectly and they feel the so this is where they go wrong they feel the outcome incorrectly and then they repeat the bets so they go through they feel the outcome incorrectly and then they repeat the bets then the outcome comes if it's a good one they pat their back if it's a bad one they blame someone else so this is this is where uh, they need to be aware of and then they repeat the bets so they are not improving anything so i'll show you the correct way of fielding the outcomes so what they do fielding outcomes if they win they put it into the skill bucket which is they say this is in our control look at me i'm genius i took this trade i made so much money and that's what i saw in that trade that's the signal so they they categorize it as a skill so a skill bucket and this is in my control whereas if the trade is a loser then they put it in the luck bucket which is outside of their control so they don't evaluate they don't evaluate they don't evaluate any trade which made them money they don't evaluate any trade where they lost money they just assign it to the luck bucket so luck bucket which is also the control they, they did not have any control over this trade and blah 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 and i lost it so 
that's what we do. So we are not evaluating the trades which are winners. We are not evaluating any trades which are loser. And assigning the loser trade to the luck bucket, assigning the win, a winner trade to the skill bucket. So correct, the correct learning loop is uh, we have sets of beliefs. So first of all, there, this this is a, a lot of work here. Our beliefs, a lot of beliefs which are wrong. So you may want to evaluate your beliefs and see if you have a correct belief regarding trading and yourself. Then you need to evaluate the bet sizes. So this is another homework. And then the outcome comes and then fielding the outcomes correctly. So this is what uh, we need to do, field the outcomes correctly and then repeat the repeating the bets. So this is the correct learning loop. So what happened, uh, traders, they say traders are like naive, naive scientists. People who study their outcome like scientists, but as naive scientists, this is uh, psychologist Fritz Heider. And the same goes for traders. So traders act like a na naive scientist. They just, you know, uh, if, if if they win, they're happy. Nothing to do about that trade because that's a win trade. I saw it coming. I saw that. Uh, I recognize it. You know, you, you know, I, I I can read the chart. And if it's a loser, then it was out of my control. There's another author called Dan Ariely. He's economist and psychologist. So he has done all the research on the people and. Um, he found that people are predictably irrational. They take credit for the good stuff and they blame others for the bad stuff. This is the human tendency, taking the credit for the good stuff and blaming others for the bad stuff. So think about that good stuff, bad stuff, blaming others for the bad stuff, taking credit for the good stuff. Like Just like tracks, uh, the uh, driver, there's a study done, 75% of car drivers blame others for the accident. 37% of single vehicle accident drivers find a way to pin the blame on someone else. So just like 37% of single vehicle accident drivers find a way to pin the blame on someone else, there's no, no, no one involved, but somehow they pin the blame on someone. So this is one of the quote I, I saw. I was proceeding down the road. The trees on the right were passing me in orderly fashion at 60 miles per hour. Suddenly, one of them stepped out in my path, boom. So uh, a tree stepped out in front of him and he hit the tree. So that's the way the traders also behave, just like uh, these guys, uh, you know, uh, telling the judge or why he hit the tree. The tree came in front of him. So when we, uh, when we don't evaluate uh, the trades properly, we miss out the learning opportunities. So if we have taken five trades, if we close five trades, we need to evaluate all those trades properly, whether uh, the result was um, uh, good or bad. So what they do, the traders do, good outcomes is based on 100% skill. So they assign 100% uh, skill. If the trade was a loser, they assign it 100% to the luck. There is no, they, 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 there's no in between, there's no shade of gray, there's nothing, they're extreme. 100% skill, 100% luck. Maybe there was a combination of a skill and then there was a luck. So evaluate each trade. If you don't evaluate, then you're missing the learning opportunities. So blaming on luck creates missed opportunities to improve ourselves. So we need to remind ourselves that if we blame anything on the luck, we are missing the opportunity to improve ourselves. Here is a quote by the student telling the, his uh, parent, the teacher does not like me. Everybody did poorly. The teacher put material on the test we did not cover in class. You can ask anyone. So um, uh, I hope my daughter don't, or my son don't tell me one day the teacher doesn't like him or her and everybody did poorly. Uh, you can ask anyone. You know, you can, the trader can say, you can ask anyone, uh, all traders lost money because of this. You can ask any trader. So the way to, to field our outcomes correctly, ask these questions. There are other dozens of questions, but I put some, some questions on the screen here. Why did something happen the way it did? So ask yourself why this trade where we lost money, even when, when the trade is a winner, you need to ask, 
Why did I win in this trade? What things we did right? What things I did right? And how the, the whole trade played out? And if it's uh, if it's a loser, then e even more. So maybe there was no fault of your own. You did everything correctly, but it so happened there was a news came out and you know, 360,000 uh, Tesla being recalled. You did not know that, that you did not know whether there's a news coming out and now the Tesla is falling. So that was beyond your control, but you did the things correctly. So write it down. Why did something happen the way it did? So maybe the answer will come out. Do we need to evaluate our beliefs? So um, ask, you know, um, maybe uh, your belief is that the market is crashing and you go and buy puts, but the market is uptrending and you, you know, you, 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 so when, when the market goes down like 200 points, is it time to go short? No, she, do I need to close all my position and I start buying puts? So if you have that belief and the next day the market goes up, then ask yourself that uh, you close all your long position and you went and bought uh, puts and now you're losing all the money in puts and all the call long position you had, you're making money, uh, is uh, they are all going up and now you don't have those long position. So uh, do you need to evaluate your belief about the market, the way you evaluated the market maybe? There's nothing wrong, uh, it's your belief, the way you evaluate uh, the market. So is that a non-useful belief? So the answer may come out that you have a non-useful belief about the market. Um, so um, can you do something about it to get rid of that non-useful belief? Can you replace your non-useful belief with a useful belief? So uh, um, trader, something going up, Airbnb flying, uh, news come out and it's flying and it's just, uh, and then uh, go and buy put thing. Okay, Airbnb will go down tomorrow. I'm going to buy puts. So, uh, and then it, it starts to fly the next day. It's flying. So it flew, gapped up. And at the end of the day, you buy the puts, uh, thinking that it's extreme or whatever. And then next day it flies again more. So, so ask yourself then uh, what, what kind of belief I had that made me buy the put. Maybe I don't have a useful belief. Maybe I need to evaluate my belief correctly. Another thing, do we need to reevaluate the process of our evaluating the outcomes? So when you're evaluating the, uh, your outcome, whether it's a winner or a loser, at the end of the day, when you're going through your debriefing process, maybe you're lacking some step there. So go through the steps you're taking to evaluate the outcome. You know, um, uh, if you don't, if, you, if you're not constantly evaluating the process of evaluating, you are not improving. So think about that. You need to constantly evaluate the process of evaluation. So see if there's any step missing there. Um, if you're losing a lot in one or two trades, then uh, maybe your bet size is not correct. Maybe your process of um, selecting the bet size, the dollar amount you are willing to lose or the dollar amount you are putting on a trade may not be correct. Maybe you don't have a process of evaluating your bet size. Sometimes you put $5,000, sometimes you put $1,000, sometimes you put $10,000, sometimes you buy 1,000 shares, sometimes you buy 100 shares. So what is this? Do you have a process of putting the bet so maybe you need to go and evaluate your bet size. Maybe everything is correct. Maybe you need to evaluate your yourself. Maybe you're not fit for trading for that particular month or week or day. Uh, something is going on in your life. Like I receive email every day. Uh, you know, people go on vacation. People have getting married. People having kids. Uh, something goes on. Like today, I received my grandpa died. I'm taking care of uh, my grandpa's. Uh, state or whatever so i will be out of the market please put my my subscription on hold so maybe you need to evaluate yourself so fielding your outcomes correctly when we feel our outcomes correct we improve if we don't we don't improve so think about that so believe betting outcome comes so here is the loop 
So belief, bet, belief, bet, future, and then the outcomes are coming. I missed the slide. Outcomes are coming here, fielding the outcomes correctly. So this is the process. You need to uh, feel your outcome correctly and then repeat the bets. So repeat the bets, making sure that you know the outcomes. What was the reason for the outcome? Whether it's a skill, luck, or combination. Uh, next, we all have. So I read. Um, I read a lot of books on psychology, besides trading on psychology, on technology, etc. So uh, there is a something called self-serving bias. So self-serving bias is deeply embedded in us. We we tend to self-servers. That's what I'm trying to understand. So it's, it's self-serving bias is a robust thinking pattern. So you can Google the self-serving bias and maybe buy books on all the biases traders have, and maybe you can learn something. So I'm just giving you some clues. Understanding creates solid practical strategies. So understanding the self-serving bias uh, help us create the practical strategies which we can deploy in trading. We improve our ability to learn. So we, uh, human traders have the need. We all human have a, a, a need to be right and need to feel good. So, so need to be right and need to feel good. So, if we uh, be, based on this need, we take the wrong decision in trading. Need to be right and need to feel good. These two things uh, hurt our trading. So, they say that they study all possible outcomes. When we take the trade and the result comes, there could be another another outcome could have come. So study, even though you you uh, close the trade and the outcome was this, but there could have been some other outcomes. So study all the possible outcomes which you could have uh, seen in this trade. And luckily you uh, uh, you saw the positive outcome. So foster open-mindedness and evaluate all possible causes of outcomes, all possible, whether the trade was a winner or whether the trade was a loser. Evaluate all possible causes of outcomes. So you need to spend time on uh, debriefing at the end of the day. So uh, what we have is a positive self narrative. Take credit for success. So this is the loop we, we go through. We take credit for success, uh, we made the right decision. So we say ourselves, hey, I took this trade, I made the right decision. So when we say we made the right decision, we have the feel for being right. So it makes us feel good when we say ourselves, we made the right decision. When we say we made the right decision, it gives us the feeling of good, good feeling inside. If something bad happened, and if let's say something bad happened, uh, we lost in a trade, and if we blame, if we say that my fault, uh, we, I made the wrong decision. So that gives us the bad feeling. So that gives us a bad feeling. So in order to avoid this bad feeling, we blame the loser trade on someone else, on the market, on the other guy, on the newsletter guy, whatever. Blame the others because we don't want to feel bad. So feeling bad due to others is not is not, not our fault. It's just because the someone else uh, uh, caused this this uh, bad result. So if we if we if we become ira uh, if we become rational and if we evaluate that okay, let's evaluate why I lost money on this trade so that I don't repeat, I don't uh, commit the same mistake. Temporarily, you will feel bad but then later the result will be good but if you ignore completely and blame someone else on the market on the broker on the software on the newsletter you will be in a constant loop because there will be trades which are the loser trades so think about that there's another chart i got a responsibility versus success so they say the more responsible the trader is or in general in life the more success you achieve so we are all responsible for our uh, life so responsibility versus success so when we lose our self-image is at risk so when we lose our self-image is at risk so there is a, a big research done by dr maxwell mars in his book called psycho cybernetics it's available on youtube it's an 11 hour audio book you may want to listen to his uh, book it's free you can buy it on amazon but it's free 11 hours 
uh, audio book psycho cybernetics so self when we lose our self image is at risk because we we don't want to um, in front of our family members in front of our, our friend in front of our relatives we don't want to um, um, come across as a loser so so this is what either the hundred we we tend to either we uh, uh, if if the trade is right we blame it on hundred we we categorize this as hundred percent towards a skill whereas if the trade is a loser we categorize hundred percent towards uh, luck there is no in between there is no no shades of gray so there is no scale there is the extreme uh, scale hundred percent or zero percent there was no skill and there was nothing there it was not our fault so because self image is at risk so we tend to um, when we have a good outcome we categorize as a good skill when we have a bad outcome we categorize into the bad luck and we don't evaluate the quality of our decision so when we take the trade from the time from the moment we commit to the trade till we close the trade so there are a lot of decisions you made. So in any profession, in any business, when you are making a home, you are taking a, uh, thousands of decisions every day. So, so don't, if you don't evaluate the quality of your decision, then uh, you will repeat the whole process again and again and again. So all the decision you took from the time you took the trade, before even taking the trade, what you saw, till you close the trade, all those decisions need to be evaluated. There is a relation, perfect correlation there. So, um, uh, again, another thing: being more objective, you need to be more objective, be more open-minded, uh, assess the influence of luck and skill. So, every trade has a has some element of luck. So that's that's uh, we cannot ignore the the effect of luck in the trade. Some trades, uh, you know, when we enter in a trade, we see it going uh it's let's say airbnb or roku and then earning comes out and it starts flying so the uh, so you made uh, more than what you were planning so there's there is an element of luck there when the earning come positive and it affects your uh, bottom line it could have gone the other way also even though the same chart is going up and then the earning comes and it goes down so there is a skill and the luck also when that happened but uh, not all the time uh, you categorize that this is due to luck and this is due to skill. So retrain the way you process the result, accurate fielding, accurate truth. So in other words, you're seeking the truth. So you're seeking uh, the, the, the truth. So if you, if you seek the truth all the time for each trade, your, your trading result will improve. So there's another... Um, People say, people watching. Uh, Yogi Berra, so Yogi Berra, we all know Yogi Berra. He said one time, you can observe a lot by watching. So uh, if you have a trading buddy, you know, people say, uh, I don't have a trading buddy. I live in a small town. I cannot have a trading buddy. Um, so you, if you don't um, find someone, so do something about it. Watching is an established learning method. So. People say that if you can learn a lot by watching other trader, but it's not um, hundred percent. It will. It's not just because you watch someone, you become an expert trader. It's not going to happen because it has a limit. Uh, when that trader is uh, trading, you don't know. You're not inside that uh, body of that trader. You don't know, you know what he is going through, what emotions he's going through, what 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 else he's thinking. So the watching others can help you to a certain extent, but not completely. So if you're watching some other trader and he's making money, then uh, you say, okay, he got lucky. So now you are um, coming up with this uh, thought that, okay, he got lucky. And you are not um, assigning any um, insight, although you're saying, uh, wow, you're a great trader, blah, blah, blah. But inside you're saying, uh, you know, he got lucky. So uh, good outcome for others, they are lucky. Whereas a good outcome for us, we are awesome. So you know, think about that. Do you do this 
that when you win in a trade, you say, because I'm awesome. And then when another trader wins, because he got lucky. So think, think about this. Also think that no matter how much you watch, any trader, you cannot learn 100% the way he is operating. He, you're not inside his brain. You don't have his brain. So another, another problem with the trader is the lack of compassion, whether it's a compassion for yourself and whether the compassion for others. So this is the way traders beat themselves. They say, I have, when they lose, they say, I have the worst judgment. How could I be so stupid? I should have known. I should have known it's coming. I should have known the earning is coming and I still open the trade. How stupid can I be? So, well, uh, next time, check the earning. Don't open the trade if the earning is uh, after 30 minutes. So, uh, uh, don't beat yourself. So, traders have a lack of, uh, not only the lack of compassion for others, but I mean, not I'm saying all the traders, but uh, people, if they don't have a compassion for that, they don't even have a compassion for themselves. So they beat themselves. And there are a list of all that. There is a list of hundreds of things you can write here, uh, for, which shows the lack of self-compassion. So uh, another thing, feeling the outcome of others. This is the way traders or people uh, feel uh, the positive outcome of others. We say, we must believe in luck for the, so this person, uh, John uh, Cocteau, he's saying, we must believe in luck for how else can we explain the success of those we don't like? So in general, uh, when somebody is making money, uh, we don't like the other person to make money. He's making so much money, I'm not making money. So we tend to feel jealous and then we assign his success uh, as a part of the luck. Uh, I mean, th this is the uh, research done. So fielding the successful outcome of others in negative way has a cost. So realizing that if we feel the successful outcome of others in a negative way, we are hurting ourselves. So we are hurting ourselves and no one else. So we, uh, th that if that is our habit, we need to reshape our habits. So this book, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg is a good book. Maybe you want to read. Uh, he teaches us how to reshape our bad habits. So he he goes through the uh, the three step process the queuing and the outcome the 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 queuing and the the process in between and the reward so queuing and the process and the reward so if you follow his step you may want to you will uh, may be able to change some bad habits you have we all have so and here's a list of some uh, problems with the traders so all this i i mean there are millions of other things it's not just uh, this is a slide number 26, so not in 22, 23 slides. You can come to know the problem with the traders, but here are some. Uh, they avoid traders in general, avoid to fix themselves. They don't, they don't go through the process of fixing themselves. They resist to fix their issues. They have, we all have thousands and thousands of issues uh, when it comes to trading. We don't want to know, we don't want to fix it. We don't even know who we are as a trader. We don't even know our financial objectives. We don't know our limitations. So there, there, there's a limitation. It could be uh, technology limitation. It could be analysis limitation. It could be, could be, we don't have the knowledge to trade and we are trying to trade. So we have limitation. We don't have time. We have a time limitation. We have capital limitation. We have a skill limitation. We have issues in the family, et cetera. So we have all kinds of limitation. So no, not knowing the limitation, not developing the business plan. So trading is a business, it's a serious business, not, no, not developing the proper plan, uh, no, don't have any trading plan. So just trade whatever comes, you know, see it on CNBC, Fox News, or somebody mentioned on the for, on a Facebook forum, just trade and um, open an account and start trading. Not spending time to learn the skills needed. People's experts say there is, a, you tend to get it when you spend at least 10,000 hours. So uh, at least 10,000 hours, that's where you start to get the things. And 20,000 hours to do some mastery and and creativity so 10,000 to 20,000 hours of solid learning so you can when you are in the when you come to the office you have a phone 
you can uh, turn on the stopwatch and and uh, when you're in the market when you're not in the market when you're not learning you stop the watch and then you turn it on again and see how many hours real hours not just uh, looking at the screen and, and counting it as a learning process, the real hours. So take note of your hours you are learning and what you learn in a journal and see how many hours you spend on really learning some things, any skill, not maintaining the trading journal. People don't have a trading journal. So trading journal, deep down, uh, deep dive in the trading journal, not paying attention to physical and mental health. So I mentioned to you all the, the series of bed bets uh, people take every day so it, it hurts the trading indulging in all kind of vices uh, if you are a spiritual uh, God has told us for a reason that no one indulge in vices eventually it will get you so um, don't indulge in vices don't drink alcohol don't smoke you know don't eat burger pizza etc don't eat sugar items, it will get you. Not being spiritual. So the study is done uh, in general. I'm not saying you need to be spiritual. If you're not spiritual, it will hurt you in uh, life and in trading. Not being grateful. People are not grateful. So not being grateful, the being cocky, etc. it will hurt you. Not contributing to charitable causes, it will come back to you. Not realizing how blessed you are, it will hurt your trading. So more problems, um, unable to take losses. So we as a human, we don't want to take loss and then we watch it grow. I mentioned to you need to be right. So when the outcome is the positive, we assign it to our skill because we need to uh, feel good, feel right. Uh, we ring the register quickly in a profitable trade uh, because when we ring the register, we feel good. Um, if we ring the register on a loser trade, we will feel bad. We assign that loser trade to some luck, not on the skill, and we blame someone else. We jump from one system to another system. Uh, we don't know why the trading system is stopped working. We don't evaluate. We just keep tweaking the system, optimize the system, abandon the system. There is a whole uh, presentation I have. I'm, I'm on the final stage. I will show you. Uh, what emotions we go through when we jump from one system to another system and why we are doing it. So I learn it and I um, being aware of this is what's happening to me. I, I step back when I try to over optimize any uh, of my uh, my system or the way I read the chart. So I, 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 I am aware of and aware, being aware helps you uh, not abandoning the system. Something may be wrong with the market. Uh, you don't need to abandon that system losing faith in the system, getting excited. All, uh, I read that all the, 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 the big emotions come from excitement. So the fear, panic, and the regret, all these come from the excitement. So excitement is the um, culprit. So, you know, you can get excited for a positive reason, but uh, so uh, uh, when you're feeling excited, if you're aware of that, I'm getting excited. Uh, I, I need to step back, so don't get excited. Um, you know, you may end up, um, there is a consequences for being excited. So be aware of that you're getting excited. You know, we get excited. I have a tendency, I tell you. Um, if I play my music, which is a, a high beat and everything, the, the kind of song I like, so I have a list. And then I suddenly find myself driving 85 miles an hour. I said, damn, I, I don't know, even know that I'm at 85, 90. And why? Because the that music, the kind of music I'm playing. So I'm aware of that. When I play the music, I better, you know, just cruise at 70. That's the limit. Uh, it doesn't hurt because I see it, especially at nighttime. And there's nobody on the highway. So it's, uh, the wind is blowing and I'm playing my music and I'm going 90. So I remind myself that when I play this list, I know I'm going to uh, get excited and I start cruising. So be, be careless in this. And another thing, I haven't gotten the ticket. Um, God is great. I haven't gotten any ticket for five, six years, seven years. I don't know how long. So it's about time. So I know it's about time that I need to, I will be getting a ticket. I got a parking ticket in front of my home. So that's how stupid I can be, you know. Uh, see, I'm I'm blaming myself. How how stupid can you be to get a parking ticket in front of your home? 
and I I filed um, like appeal. And the reason I gave, they said, no, that reason is no good. You need to pay. So I need to pay because I was careless. I did not park correctly. So, and I got excited and I parked it at nighttime. And then in the morning, uh, that guy got, got me, you know, he came and uh, he gave me the ticket to be careless. So uh, the top traders, they don't do these things, what I, I told you the, about the outcome and all those things which I mentioned. So top traders have a, have a imagine the top traders who make the top 1% of the traders. Are they doing all those things which I mentioned and then they blame it on luck and um, they don't have a compassion for themselves or they're beating themselves. They don't do those things. They have a rules. They develop. They have a. They have. They have worked out their their trading plan. They have a business plan. They know how to, uh, what they are looking for, and they they follow their rules. They go through the mental process, the mental rehearsal, early morning. They evaluate themselves. They have a proper diet. I, I'm sure if they, you know, I hear all these uh, uh, traders they're making money, and then they you see them or hear that they were in the bar and all that. I don't know how how you can do but I can't, uh, I cannot trade if I, if I don't have, if I, I can trade, but I, I'm aware if I don't have a good sleep, then in the morning I remind myself that I woke up not the way I'm supposed to. So I may be making a mistake I need to be aware of. So, so, so my, that's my rule. I evaluate myself early morning. Making money requires consistency. Top traders play trading game perfectly. So imagine that. Uh, imagine a top trader, and imagine a, a, a trader who is doing all those things which I showed you how he feel the outcome. So, trading can be improved dramatically, in not in maybe overnight, maybe in three months, six months, one year, if you take the outcome of each trade and evaluate it properly and see if you made a mistake. Even if that trade was a winner, did you make any mistake? Could you have done better? Could you have made more money in this trade? Could you have deployed another strategy? What strategy you could have put? It's the same trade, it's the same chart, but if you had deployed another strategy, you would have made more money. So think about that. And if you made a mistake, uh, what was the mistake? So journal that mistake because that mistake have an effect. So what was the cause of that mistake and what was the effect of that mistake? Bigger the cause, larger the effect. So knowing what one mistake caused. So every time we make a mistake, we, every time we make a mistake uh, in trading or in life, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a price to pay. So we all know that. So uh, we, if we go to late, if you go to bed late, uh, we enjoying it or watching movie, but in the morning we know we have to pay the price so think about that same thing same way in the trading every mistake has a cost so write down in the journal what what was the mistake i'll, I'll give you some layout of the journal uh, have a written rules follow those rules not following rule is a mistake if you don't have any trading rules and you're not following it uh, then you're assigning the outcome to the luck and not to your skill so easy pray, pray for professionals. So big, big boys, they, 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 they rely on uh, such traders to make the money. So we, we open the account and we give it to them. They, they, they are professionals. So you can have a mistake journal saying, okay, uh, date of mistake. So today, February 20th, uh, 2023 is the day type of mistake. Maybe you can do the coding of the mistake, 001. Um, Instead of buying one contract, I bought 10. 002, um, instead of uh, buying calls, I bought uh, puts. So what? why I did that. Uh, coding 003, I forgot to check the earning date. 004, um, I left the buy order there and I got, uh, I ca caught the five, um, what? Falling knife. So write down all these things which you're doing and then the effect of that mistake. So, and then analyze the mistake journal and see if the same code is appearing two times or three times. If it's appearing three times or more, then you are self-sabotaging. So do the research on self-sabotage and see how you are self-sabotaging. I, 
I do. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not. I don't do self sabotage. I do. Uh, people do self sabotage in uh, financially, uh, in a relationship, and everywhere. So, and then another thing, psychological effect of that mistake. So financial effect is something, and then the psychological damage we are uh, uh, having based on that mistake. So write down the steps to be taken in the future to mitigate those mistakes. So if you write down the steps to mitigate those mistakes. You will not, you will eliminate. Once you eliminate and you operate at a 95% efficiency level, that's where the top traders are. They operate, they are profession, they are professional in reading the charts and trading, whatever they do, they are professional. On top of that, they are operating at a 95 to 99% efficiency, which means uh, the 100 trades they take in, in only five to, out of hundred, only five trades they are committing a mistake. Some kind of a mistake they 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 committed. Only five out of hundred. So evaluate your efficiency level and see how many mistakes you made over the last hundred trades. See if you are operating. You shouldn't be operate. You shouldn't be trading uh, with the real money till you hit eighty five percent efficiency level. So that's what the uh, experts say you need to operate at 85 percent efficiency level in order to start the real trading below that you keep doing the simulation trading and when you reach 90 percent and above then you know that you have eliminated because there are certain um, variables which are beyond our control so uh, earnings is beyond our control but we didn't have to be in the trade uh, or open a trade which is coming due for the earning after 30 minutes. So that is a mistake. The earning has nothing to do with your trade, but you open the trade and you forgot to check the earning. So that is a mistake. So think about that, that when you took the decision, in, when, when we take, when we open a trade, before we push that button, uh, think about a road where you know they show in the movie this guy he's going through the corn field and then he comes uh, this road is going north and this road is going east west and then there is a stop sign and then he doesn't know whether he should go straight or go right left and then uh, he take the right turn and that's where the killer is and he start killing same way we reach a fork and then we don't know you know, you know sometimes the t t we reach the t and we don't know whether we need to turn right or left at that very moment when we are making the decision uh, we are accepting our consequences so think about that that very moment when we push the buy button we are accepting our consequences for that trade so you had the choice of not taking the trade you had the choice on turning left but you turn right and you it happened the killer is there the bad guy is right sitting right there on the right you, if you had turned left he would not have gotten you so think about that. So next time when you are going through the same road, you say, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna take the right right turn. I'm going to take the left turn, right turn, bad guy. So, so if you evaluate every time you do the trade, write down, eventually the time will come when you will not be committing those mistakes. So do that. And instead of being cocky and complaining and criticizing and blaming others and lack of self-compassion, uh, do this. Uh, this is the last slide. The miracles of gratitude. Focus on gratitude. Uh, even if you lose money, you learn something. Write down the lessons and say, "Okay, I learned. Uh, I will not repeat this mistake. I uh, will improve my skill. This is not because of luck, etc. Um, I, I just take it." as a learning experience and i'm becoming expert every day so feel speak think gratitude uh, if you're thankful it will make give you the, the energy to magnetize other people's circumstances and events and all the good things will start coming to you so believe in it uh impossible to bring more good to your life if you're not grateful for what you have so whatever you have be grateful if you are dis dissatisfied and jealousy and resentment and having not enough um it will it will uh, it will create problem it you will not improve your trading so blaming complaining criticizing negative emotion will hurt you so don't always assign the bad outcome to luck see if there was something which you can improve so find a way to be grateful and focus on sincere gratitude several times a day not just one you know um like don't uh, you don't 
happen just go to church uh, only on sunday i mean the god is everywhere you can you can uh, seek his help even on monday tuesday wednesday uh, six o'clock seven o'clock before sleeping waking up it's not that okay i wait for sunday or i wait for friday and then i will go and pray and uh, so don't do that think about it all the time so and then the last thing is that uh, so this is what i strongly believe that we are all living in the comfort zone so you need to embrace the fire so fire is here at the edge and you need to embrace if you don't embrace the fire run towards the fire uh, we will not achieve so whenever i see a fire truck on the road so I, we all know we have to step on the side give the way then we i think okay this these guys they are running towards the fire people are running away from the fire these guys are going towards the fire so think about it they trained to embrace the fire so we, we need to embrace uh, the fire only then we will succeed knowing that we have limitations and knowing what we want so feel the outcome properly evaluate your bed size evaluate yourself uh, evaluate your beliefs what uh, wrong belief useful belief trash belief uh, what are the limitations on the belief and over the time correct your mistakes operate at 95 percent efficiency level and you will succeed all right so i end this session here and the next time i'm preparing uh, more presentation on the trading systems uh, to sh uh, show you uh, what we go through when the trading system is stopped working i will show you the chart of all the beliefs we have not all comprehensive i can never uh, you know this is a big assignment so I'll show you some beliefs we have, all have, you can uh, narrate, and then based on the beliefs, how we trade and how we adopt a various trading system. All right, so thank you. Uh, let me see. Uh, Sometimes I find that trade ideas come in too fast for me to evaluate from Trade Genie and for my scanners, which make me enter trade without thinking. This make me leave trades early or uncomfortable. What do you think? uh my scanner which make me enter trades without thinking yes uh, so uh i learned this and i learned this uh, uh so a long time ago i did not know uh this is a process so i give you the example of uh i learned something um, put a delay so um, put uh, remind yourself that you need to give some delay uh, once upon a time, I had a Japanese girlfriend. So whenever I asked her something, she used to pause, like don't answer me right away. So I asked, hey, hey what's for dinner? And then she's, she paused even for dinner. And I said, what? So I'm driving, I'm, we, are, we are going towards San Diego. I'm, uh, we are coming home from, uh, let's say LA and uh, like 10 miles away from home. And then I asked, hey, what's for dinner? What do you want? And then uh, she's thinking, and the exits and after exit and exit after exit passes and passes and passes and then uh, five exit six exit and then i'm coming closer to home and i know that i'm closing to home and i know all the places over there but i want to eat something now and then she paused and then she tells me that this is what we going to eat so she had she was trained um, maybe it's a japanese culture she was trained to pause and then she gives me the answer so you can always remind yourself uh, that you need to pause uh, give some delay so put don't just don't just uh, get into the trade uh, put it on the on some kind of a loop so pause it and then uh, uh, stock it so there is a process of stocking the trade so you can put that trade on a stocking mode because uh, when you are and think about that that we, uh, what's wrong with your scanner the scanner may be uh coming uh is giving you the trade um uh, maybe your setting is incorrect the scanner is giving you the trade which uh where the the trade is bursting out of the range so think about it how could i have um figured out this trade like 15 minutes ago um and then if it now is here so that is your just maybe that's your signal to put that symbol on the watch list not to take the trade so you can do that. The scanner gave you the, the symbol is moving. And then you say, okay, scanner, I'm not going to take the trade, but I'm going to put it on watch list. Thank you. 
and then wait for it for the pullback so adopt some kind of a process to put some kind of a delay in your answer so people uh, also so there was an expert who told me this when your first answer when somebody asks you a question uh pause and uh, give these the second thought so i don't know what but uh, what, but i think that what he was trying to tell me to teach to put a pause so when somebody asks where are you going if you're going north give a pause and see if you say if you're going south uh, and then uh, see what how that person reacts uh, so put a delay in other words put a delay in your in your in your action or thought uh, put a timer so you know we all say that if we are angry etc just write an email damn you and this and that and all that email and then you send that email to yourself and uh, get up come back and read that email and then you say okay i'm done i'm not sending this email to that person so maybe you uh, after you put a delay then you will say no i'm not going to take this trade i'll put it for on the watch list for tomorrow or the day after tomorrow okay yeah all right so thank you i will see you soon in two days or three days i will teach on another topic so remember um, one thing uh, the more you learn and find someone to teach somebody so find someone to teach you will learn more so create a, a value giving a process so that's what i did and I'm still doing it and I will do it forever to give the value and I learned the most. So I learned something from this presentation. I thought this is the first time I'm teaching this. So next time I'll add more material and I will teach it better and I'll get the feedback. So when you start doing that, that's where you are uh, improving. Okay, thank you, bye.